Hello, my name is Jane. Um, I'm a tutor for South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture and I'm going to be talking you through a few watercolour techniques and to do it today we're going to be doing feathers. We're going to be looking at drawing feathers today and I've got an example of something similar to what we're going to be um, trying to achieve. It's a very soft look, we're going to be using lots of water, we're going to be using quite a few different colours and we're going to be letting the water move the paint around. It's quite an informal way to paint and um, you just have to kind of believe in yourself and believe a little bit in the technique for it to work. What you'll need in terms of materials um, will be your standard set of um, watercolour paints, pans, but if you've got tubes that's, that's absolutely fine. I've picked uh, two paint brushes, again it really doesn't matter too much about the size of them. I've just got kind of standard round um, number 10 and uh, a kind of pointed number 6 or a number 5 here. What you do need, which is important, is just a normal a normal fine liner pen. I mean, we don't want this one to be um, waterproof, we want it to be water soluble so that the, the water will interact with this as well and we'll get some nice dark lines with it. A pen, a pencil. Um, I've just got a, a kind of sketching um, F, which is just a kind of an HB. It will do absolutely fine. It's not too dark, it's not too light, and it'll give you a few guidelines when you're working. Two glasses of water, and really quite importantly, it's very, very difficult to create um, work out of your imagination. So I would highly recommend that when you make a decision about what you're going to be painting, is that you go onto your computer and you Google images of the kind of thing you want to do. So for instance, um, if you draw a feather without looking at it, it might not end up looking like a feather. This looks like a feather, take your shapes from that, you won't go wrong. And in terms of colour, you can go to anything you want. So I, I went on and I looked at some um, kind of bright coloured birds to get some ideas. It's not cheating, all it is is just giving you a little helping hand um, and to make you enjoy the artwork a little bit better. The first thing you want to do is you want to get the shape of the feather in. And again, um, you know, do look, at, do look at examples of it because it's quite easy to make um, something as simple as a feather look like something completely different. But the, the, the ideal technique for this, which is the same for an awful lot of techniques when you're drawing out something to begin with, is to draw the larger area. So, um, we've got the, the kind of stem here of the, of the feather and I'm going to draw it in very lightly with a pencil and I'm going to break up the lines because if I just go in straight with a very very um, strong line then there's not a lot of room for manoeuvre if you're not happy with the shape. So it's pointed at the top and bringing it down to here like that. Now what we want to do is we want to refer to the image that we've got and instead of worrying about any of these little lines where the feathers have split up which gives it this kind of authentic look, what you want to be doing is you want to be looking at the full outside line, the shape of it. So I'm, I'm seeing that kind of a little bit up the stalk here, um, I'm going to be pulling out bringing the shape up here. Again, I'm keeping it very light and I'm keeping the lines broken. I don't particularly want the pencil to be showing through at the end, but as you can see, I'm just doing... Now that you've drawn in the shape of the feather, then you can start to look at um, the areas where it's split up a little bit. Again, we don't have to be too precise with it. You want to have a, a, quite a, an informal flow with your pencil, but you are noticing that in general with feathers, they're kind of going in this direction. So I'm going, I'm going to come up here, um, take a block and just bring in a kind of little V into the side. And come up a little further, maybe another slightly smaller. Don't try to, not to make these too similar in size. Coming up the top here. And you can see here that I've got a kind of nice shape happening at that side. Same coming down um, on this side as well. So we'll go up here and 
any down. And you should be able to see that sitting inside that shape, you've got a kind of feather happening already. Now, um, don't worry um, about the lines that are here, because what we'll do is we'll be taking out these um, with an eraser, taking out these lines here, and then we'll start colouring. So I've just got an eraser at the end of this pencil, and as you can see, I'm just going to take out the areas in between the V, but I'm actually also going to fade out the edges round there, so that I don't actually, I don't actually have a finite edge all the way around the feather. And you'll see why later when we start to put the put the colour in. And you don't have to, really, you don't have to kind of hammer the paper to get all the pencil out. Just take it, just take it, just gently down. If you don't, if you don't give yourself a kind of, kind of outside um, shape, then with the best will in the world, um, you, you might just go off, off, um, off piste a little bit with the, with the shape, and it's a bit disappointing. So keep it in, and it's worth just going back in and rubbing out the outside line. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to use this fine liner. So it's a, it's a um, well-known make. Very fine line. Um, when you put water on top of this, it is definitely going to run all over the place. And in this case, that's what we want. So you're going to go over the, your pencil lines, um, pretty much keeping to the exact lines that you, that you did if you're happy with them. Try not to get too precious with it. I always try to break up lines because if I go to, if I um, just go in one straight line, it makes everything far too severe and you're going to get a kind of cartoony effect. So um, I'm just going to come to the edge here, leave, leave this pencil line just now that was there, that I've kind of taken away and just put in the kind of feathering at the edges. And you can also see at the bottom of some of the feathers, they have this lovely little kind of, um, kind of fluffy bit, which let's just put a few of them in as well, just to look at there. So you've got a kind of, a kind of hint, hint of the feather shape here, but we want, a little, we want a little bit more information. And I'm going to just maybe put a few, um, a few dark, a few dark areas in here like this, just where there might be a little bit of different colour or a, bit, a little bit of different texture to the shadow. So it's kind of looking a bit like a sketch just now. And don't go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody knows what they're doing at this particular stage, so just keeping your fingers crossed and hoping it's all going to be good. And that's actually the fun of it. So you can see I'm kind of putting these, these kind of marks in the direction that the, the feather's structured, so maybe a bit like this. Okay, so now here comes the fun bit. I'm going to take this big number 10 brush that's got a lot of, um, a lot of ability to hold a lot of water and dip it into the water. And I'm just going to start going over the whole feather, doing what you think is probably your worst nightmare and swatching everything. So you want to use quite a lot of water. Don't, don't overdo it. Just, just make sure that there are nice kind of, kind of pools of things happening. And you're working quite quickly because you want to keep the, the water damp on the paper because we're going to work into it in colour pretty quickly. But 
you will also notice that I'm not going at this stage too far out of the outline. Do a little a wee bit of a sweep down here. I always think it could be trick is always to when you're doing something like a stalk or even a tree trunk or anything, just do half of it and leave it the other half um, light. Now if that was me, I would just leave it there entirely because I absolutely love that. I absolutely love it. But we're going to take it a little bit further. So looking at the colours that are in in this resource, I'm going to move over to the watercolours. And I know that this is still damp, so what's going to happen, obviously, is I'm going to drop colours in there and it's going to start to disperse and it's going to run in lots of different places. So, we're just going to be brave. So, I'm going to go in with some um, red. Okay, and it's going to be quite watery. And I'm going to drop, just drop colour in. Don't, go, don't use too much, don't try not to be too heavy in the pigment. Just move it around a wee bit. Again, try, try to avoid making any like kind of definite marks because you want, you actually want the colour to do the work for you. And you're going to be putting a few colours in, so let's not, um, don't cover everything, don't cover every area. I'm quite bright at the top here. I'm not worried, too worried that that's too bright just now because we've got a second layer that goes on after this is dried and that's when we do go in with quite intense colours. But I'm going to put a little bit more down here just to balance it off. Like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the colours on this in the same kind of um, harmonious um, kind of the spectrum, the colour spectrum, keep it quite harmonious. So I'm looking at kind of warm colours. I am going to be picking out mostly the kind of, I think, the yellows and the reds and kind of the oranges here, um, just for the first layer. Because what if, if you put in all the kind of primary colours, yellow, blue um, and red together, you end up with brown and we don't want brown. Not for this particular bird. So I'm going to just put, in order to maybe create a few wee kind of um, orangey patches, I'm just going to get in there with some yellow. In there. And the reds, the red and the yellow will obviously um, come together and make orange. Oh, it's all happening here. Now you can see the issue here because this, at this point, isn't too far removed from an acorn leaf. Right, that's why you need to be careful with your outlines and to remember what you're doing. Right. Where you see little patches of almost like the pigment separating, that's called granulation. And um, it's actually it's a feature of watercolour, it's a very handy feature of watercolour actually. Um, I'm just going to take it slightly up now, kind of slightly shape the Okay. So you, these little kind of pools and little dimples that are in the in the in the watercolor paper um, are make the whole watercolour look, the whole kind of thing authentic. Right, now this is where really, it's absolutely terrifying, right? So what you're going to do is we're going to lift um, a little bit of, I'm going to actually go in, I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue, I can't help it. I'm going to go in with this lovely, this lovely kind of light blue here and I'm going to do a little bit of work at the bottom. Just drop some colour in, that, keep it nice and watery. Okay. And then 
very, very loosely, I'm going to start coming out of the out of the shape of the feather. Might use a little bit cleaner water here, a nice wee bit of and at the top I think I might go for a little bit of red. This creates a kind of devil me care. I'm out doing some sketching on a lovely summer's day. Um, look at me, I'm not that bothered about getting it perfect and hey ho, it looks fab at the end of it. Right, so. Give it me look like that. So, so far so good. And if you thought that was terrifying, just wait till you get to the next bit. So this is a bit where um, quite often you've created this wonderful piece of art and um, then the instructions on your YouTube video tell you to splatter paint across it and you're thinking, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm just, I'm just not gonna do it. However, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Um, what I think I'll do is I shall choose um, a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow together. Again, let's go for a bit of an orange. And you want to have this so that it is um, not too heavy with the pigment, but not so watery that the, sp the splattering becomes a problem. Right, so the thing to do is have a practice and you just fill up your brush and do this. If you start thinking, oh, I need to do this in a creative way, then it's all gonna go horribly wrong, right? What I wouldn't recommend is a kind of full-on throwing. There we go. Right, I think we're going to leave it there. Always leave it just before you're going to make a mistake. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that to completely dry. It has to be completely dry for the next the next bit. If you if you are in doubt about if it's if it's completely dry, just put your hand on top of it. If the hand feels cool, then it's not dry. It should feel nice and kind of neutrally papery. So we've left a couple of minutes and as you can see, there's all sorts of things happening. There's, there's some of these dots have dispersed a little bit and, and you might not like that. If you don't like it, then what to do is take a, a very, very watery brush and just, just gently lift out. In a very, very gentle kind of circular motion, you can just kind of shift that away a little bit. Not, not terribly keen. And also, it's quite a good idea to have a bit of kitchen towel or something. Okay. It's a bit, it with watercolour, hard to believe, I know, you can remedy an awful lot of things that you're not happy with and still get some lovely effects. You can see you get this really nice look. Um, another thing you can do is you can um, apply while, while it's still damp, I'm going to just put a little bit more red in, in here, in here. And you can let the pools of, of water and the watercolour just sit and dry as, as they are. But another lovely thing you can do is you can get some sea salt and just, if you put sea salt on top of wet watercolour, it will, it will actually, um, the granulation will be mo much, more effect much more effective. The, the, the salt goes into the paint and it just kind of um, sprays it out a little bit and then when you leave it to completely dry, you can then scrape off the salt and you get these lovely little patterns going on inside. So um, I've done a couple of feathers because as you, as you can see, it takes, it takes time for things to dry and then, and then you have to add in. So what I've got, I've got this one that um, I did a little bit earlier on in the day. It is now completely, completely dry. And it's very, it's still very, very pale. And you can see, you can see, the, still see the ink lines in it and everything, but you can see that as the watercolour has dried, the intensity has kind of come out of it. But that's fine because this is just the, that's, that's the first layer that you put on. Now we can go back in and work into it a little bit more. 
So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring some of the um, more intense colours into. So now I'm going to go into here and um, I'm going to kind of intensify the pigment on the second layer. Again, it still has to be enough to be able to kind of move move around and be quite watery, but you, you're kind of wanting to leave quite solid areas of bright pigment instead of keeping it too soft and romantic looking. And I'm just going to move it up here. And what you don't want to do is go over all the work that you did on the first layer. So you want to be leaving the blues and the greens kind of popping through and the yellows. If you if you find that you've, you know you've put down some um, of the colour and it's got it's got quite a kind of def definite line, just try to just sort of eke it out a little bit so that you're not getting any really strange shapes happening. And you can really quite quickly, you can start to see this kind of watercolory um, feel to, let's move this over a little bit, um, to the picture. What I'm trying to do a little bit here is it's um, it's one of the kind of main sort of important things in painting generally is that you get kind of a change in what we call values so that we have quite strong perhaps dark values against quite light values and that that can make the image in front of you can stand it can give it a dimension that you might not normally get if you keep everything too, too pale. I'm going to look up here, I'm going to be a bit braver with the pigment up here, be a little bit braver in there, I'm going to maybe just go in again with a little bit of Very, very light touch. It's, it's, I'm literally whispering that brush across the top. If you find yourself holding the, the brush at the bottom and going like that, um, you, you won't, you, you won't get this particular kind of look. And again, I'm going to just very, very gently just kind of indicate that the colour's kind of coming out of the top, and maybe a bit down there as well. So, as you can see, it's kind of moved on a little bit from the first, first layer. So, you leave, this, leave this until it's dry. You can take a hair dryer to it. If you take a hair dryer to it when it's got the salt on it, it might make the, the process of the salt on the, the paint kind of really overreact. So if it's got salt on it, I would really like to just dry naturally. Um, I, on this particular one, I decided against that. Um, so you just feel it, just feel it and see how, how what the temperature of it is. Right, so um, as you can see, I, although I've used colors quite similar to this little bird here, I've not used the intensity, intensity of the color. And that's because the kind of look um, I'm wanting is a kind of, um, a kind of, I don't know, sort of fairy tale -y look. It's a kind of quite soft, quite a pretty kind of look. Um, and, and because feathers are light, um, it, it kind of lends itself 
to this kind of work with the watercolours. However, I am going to go back into it with a little bit of, of the ink pen and then use a little bit of water just to give it, as I said before, a, a bit more of, use a bit more values in order to get a little bit more strength into the image. So there's two ways we can do it. You can go in with the pen that we've just been using because we, remember we can we can wash that or if you wanted to we could use um, a very fine, very fine, quite small pointed brush and again as we've seen before in some of the, of the, the film filming that Payne's grey which is not quite black, it's, it's a kind of mix of Mars black and ultramarine blue and it's not quite as um, strong and in, in, intense maybe as using the pen. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the pen however and I'll just start going back in over some of the lines. Now remember this is a feather so I am, I'm now going to put in lines that are going in the direction that we know to give the look of a, of, of a feather. And I've, I've got to remember, even though I can't see them very well, that I've got little areas here that I don't want to be going, I don't want to be drawing over. Just giving, and I'm keeping. I'm trying to keep it quite loose. The areas of the feather, making sure I'm still using lines that are in that direction. I've just done just to kind of soften it out a wee bit. Now, when water, when watercolour has been dried and you go back over it with with um, water, you reactivate it. You'll see that the colours come back up again, they will fade back down. 
But what you can do here is you can take something like a, an old, a bit of card or an old credit card. And if you've still got press quite hard, you should be able to get some lines coming down. Drawn in the same direction as put a little bit of this colour in here just to show you this bit. a little corner of the card and you can scrape just scrape in some lines they're not terribly obvious but they will they will help to get um, the look When we're, when we're putting colour on top of other colour, it's called glazing. And we can do quite a lot of that in say, this kind of second stage. I don't think this is hard enough. Use a credit, use a credit card or a, or a for something that's a bit better. You're actually really kind of scraping in and doing it in that direction and you will see really fine lines. So all these techniques put together, you can you can try them separately, um, you know, with the, the the pen and the ink on its own. You can try um, just take it just using the pen's grey instead of the ink, make it slightly less less illustrative. I'm just going to go quickly back into kind of into the edges here just to sort of um, firm up the shape of feathers so that you can see the kind of raggedy part of it. Um, feather. 